So recently there was a new version of Firebase Authentication for .NET that came out, v4, and a lot of people have been asking me, how can we integrate Firebase Authentication v4 into a .NET MAUI application? So on the contrary, I've already done a whole series on Firebase Authentication v3 in a WPF application. So we're gonna see how that's done. We're gonna start from an application from scratch. So let's see how fast we can do this. Let's see how easy things are with Firebase authentication. So the first thing we'd wanna do is create a new Firebase project and then enable authentication. But I already talked about how I already did a whole series with Firebase authentication for WPF and the V3 package. So I'm actually gonna use the same exact Firebase project for this application that we're gonna create. So that was secret message. So we can come over to authentication and we already have email and password enabled as our only sign in provider. And that's the approach we're going to use for this new application as well. So a lot of people talk about the OAuth flows like Google OAuth for signing in from a desktop application, but it's really tricky because those flows are really geared towards web applications. So we're not going to be talking about that here, just going to be focusing on email and password, but maybe down the road, we'll come back to this and set up an OAuth flow. So now that we have our Firebase project set up, let's set up our Maui application. So feel free to start from a new solution, but I'm gonna be using the same exact solution that I used for the WPF tutorial that I did a while back, just to have this all in one place. And it kind of makes sense since we're using the same backend Firebase project as well. So let's add a new solution here or add a new project, I should say. We're doing a Maui application. I'll call this secretmessage.maui.net8. Sounds good, latest framework version. And project created, and slowly but surely, application boots up. All right, so of course, the first thing we have to do is install v4 of the Firebase Authentication.NET package. As we see here, I'll link this repo in the description. There's also framework specific packages for something called Firebase UI. It's basically just a drop in UI that supports authentication with very little configuration, but we're not going to be digging into that here. We're just going to be starting from the raw Firebase Authentication.NET package. So let's go to Manage NuGet Packages, and we want Firebase Authentication.NET version 4. There we go, installed. And now, just to make building this out easier, I'm also going to install Community Toolkit.MVVM so that we get some MVVM helpers and don't have to do quirky MVVM stuff along the way. All right, that should be all we need. So heading over to our Maui program.cs. First thing we're gonna have to do is configure and register the Firebase auth client from the package in dependency injection. So we're gonna take our service collection and we really wanna add this Firebase auth client as a singleton. And the reason for this, and we'll kind of see this a little bit later, is that the Firebase auth client in the V4 package actually manages user state for us. So we want that user state in one single auth client across our application. We wouldn't want it spread across multiple instantiated instances. So add this as a singleton so that our user state is centralized and we have a single source of truth. So we're gonna add a Firebase auth client from the Firebase auth package. And that takes in a Firebase auth config. And this is where the good stuff goes. So the first thing we have to specify is the API key. So we can grab that over here in the Firebase console. So go to project settings and we actually want this web API key. So copy this whole thing and paste it in here. This is okay to expose in source code. It's not really a secret, even though it's called like an API key, it sounds like a sensitive value. But in terms of Firebase API keys, these are really only used to identify your project. So totally fine if this gets exposed. The other thing we need is the auth domain. So you can find this by going over to authentication in Firebase going to settings, going to authorize domains, and you should be able to grab either one of these that isn't localhost. So let's grab this Firebase app one and paste that in. The next thing we have to do is specify which providers we support. So this will be an array of Firebase auth providers. And right now, the only one we support or the only one we're doing right now is the email provider. Awesome, so really the only way we can test this out is by trying to sign up or sign in with a user. So let's create a couple pages for signing in and signing up. So let's remove this default main page. Let's create a pages folder and let's add a couple items in here. So we want a XAML content page for the sign in view and another one for the sign up view. And we are gonna be demoing this with MVVM principles. So let's create some view models for these pages, just regular classes. 
So the sign in view model and the sign up view model. Let's also wire everything up before we dig into the weeds here. So over in our app shell, let's import our pages namespace and name that pages. And let's add the sign in view as a page. Give that a route of sign in and a title of sign in. And add another page for signing up and reference the sign up view. Let's also hook up the view models to the views. So in our code behind, we're eventually going to inject a sign in view model and set that as the binding context so that our bindings get hooked up. Then same thing for the sign up view, inject the sign up view model, set that as the binding context. And lastly, register everything in dependency injection. These are pages, so they can really just be singletons. No big deal. So sign in view, sign in view model, sign up view, sign up view model. All right, I think we're all hooked up. Let's start by building the sign in page. So let's give this a title of sign in. This really doesn't have to be pretty for now. Let's just try and get authentication working. So we're just gonna have an entry and the text will bind to some sort of email property on our view model. We'll add that shortly. Then let's also have a password property. Make this is password true, so that's masked. And then just throw a button on here to sign in and this will bind to some sort of sign in command. Now let's have another button to go to the sign up page if we don't have an account. So we'll call this the go to sign up command or how about navigate sign up command and throw the typical text in here, need an account, sign up. All right, so moving over to the view model, let's add all of the properties that we can bind to them and all of the commands so that we can call them. So we're gonna have an email and a password and a method for our sign in command. So this will just be called sign in. And then another method for navigating to the sign up page. But these fields need to be properties that we can bind to. And these methods need to be commands that we can bind to as well. And this is where we can leverage the MVVM toolkit right now to do that automatically with an attribute. So we can make these observable properties, which will generate the underlying property for us that we can bind to, hooray. And then we can make these relay commands, which will generate the underlying command that we can bind to. Super cool, love the MVVM toolkit. It's really fun to work with. But since it leverages source generators, we do have to make our class partial. And then since these observable properties need to raise property changed on the I notify property changed interface, we need to implement or extend the helper observable object. All right, cool. So that should hook up all of our bindings. So let's get into the commands, specifically sign in, because that is where we're finally going to get into calling the Firebase auth client. So that being said, we are going to have to inject the Firebase auth client into this class. Let's add a field for it and get it through the constructor. There we go. So we got our auth client. Now let's take that auth client and we're trying to sign in. So we want to call sign in with email and password async, take our email property and our password property, await this since it's async. And there we go. That's pretty much it. Obviously in a real application, you'd want to do more here, like maybe catch errors. That would be a good thing to do and probably navigate somewhere else or show something on the UI after signing in. Let's also implement navigate sign up here so that we can move over to the sign up feature next. So this, we can just take our app shell and call it go to async. And I think our route is at sign up. And I think before we can test anything, we will have to implement the sign up part of this because I don't think I have an account set up. So let's head over there, the sign up view. Let's copy our sign in view as a starting point. So just paste that in there. Give this a title of sign up. Let's also take in a username when we sign up. Let's only take one password. It probably would make sense to have a confirm password field but we're not gonna deal with that here. Let's just focus on Firebase authentication. We're gonna have a sign up command and instead of a navigate sign up command, we're gonna have a navigate sign in command and say something like, I already have an account, sign in. All right, so that should cover the UI. Again, the UI is not gonna look pretty, but let's focus on functionality here. Now let's just copy everything from our sign in view model because it's gonna be very, very similar. Let's paste that in here, update our constructor, make this extend observable object make this a partial for our source generators. We also need a username property. Let's add that. So username, instead of navigate sign up, again, this is navigate sign in so that we can go to the sign in page. And our main method here, the handle the form submit, this will be sign up, of course. 
So all we have to do, we're going to take this alt client again and call create user with email and password async. We can also pass in a display name. So that'll be the username. And that's pretty much it. That'll create a new user for us that will sign us up. And actually after we sign up, let's go to the sign in page. All right, so moment of truth, let's test this all out. We should be able to create a new user and then sign in with that user. Wow, this looks way uglier than I expected. I'm so sorry. All right, but we do need an account. Let's sign up. All right, so email and then username and then password, sign up. All right, must have succeeded because we went to the sign in page. If it didn't succeed, we would have thrown an error and not gone to the sign in page. So this is good. Let's try and sign in. Let's also put a breakpoint right here so we can see what happens. All right, so signing in, let's continue. Uh, we get a Firebase auth HTTP exception. I think I put in the wrong password. My bad. All right, let's try this again. Sign in. And there we go. It succeeded that time. All right, so let's click sign in again. And let's take a look at our auth client. And as we can see here on the auth client, we have our signed in user from the previous sign in form submit. So pretty cool. The Firebase auth client manages user state for us so that we don't have to. So for example, if you wanted to show profile details, you could expose properties for that on this view model. So let's show username as an example. So we just dig into the auth client, grab the current user. This could be null if we're not signed in. So let's optional chain here. And let's dig into the user info and grab the display name. So when we start up the application, this will be null because we won't be signed in, which means after we sign in, we should raise on property change for the username property so that the UI refreshes this value and grabs the username of the newly logged in user. So now on our view, let's just throw a label on here pointing to the username. Let's throw some margin on here. We need some spacing because this is so ugly. All right, so not showing the username because we're not signed in yet, but let's sign in and there we go. We get our username. So nothing crazy here, just showing off that if you wanna show profile details or get any kind of profile information, just dig into the alt client and dig into the user info. All right, so we've already shown the necessities like sign in and sign up. Now we're just doing the fun stuff. So another fun thing is persistence. So V4 of this Firebase authentication library makes it really easy to persist the signed in user whenever you restart the application. So all you have to do is back here on the Firebase auth client is specify a user repository. And we just need to pass something that implements I user repository. So of course, by default, it uses an in-memory user repository, which means whenever we close the application, we lose the currently signed in user, but we could also implement this I user repository interface to persist our user in something like Maui's secure storage so that whenever we restart the application, our auth state picks up from where we left off when the application was closed. So you can implement I user repository yourself, but even better, this Firebase auth package comes with some built-in user repository implementations. So the one we'll use here is the file user repository which will store the user information in the app data folder. We just have to specify a subfolder within app data where we want to store this persisted user. So we'll just call this the name of our application secret message. So now if we boot this up and then sign in, here we go, sign in successful. Now let's restart the application. So boot up again, and we should still have our signed in user. As we can see here, we got our username, which means we're already signed in. And that was because we persisted the signed in user in a file within app data. All right, so the last thing we're gonna show off here is how to get the access token of the currently signed in user. So this is especially critical if you need to authenticate with a backend that is verifying access tokens from your Firebase project, which is exactly why I chose to put this project in this solution because we already have an API that I used in the other series that authenticates access tokens for this Firebase project. So if we hit this endpoint on the back end and we are authenticated, we should get our secret message back. So let's reference the existing WPF project that already hits this API. So first thing we can grab is this refit interface that we can use to easily hit our endpoint on the back end and get our secret message response. So let's copy this secret message query and let's just throw this in the sign in view model. 
So we are gonna be using refit here to hit our interface. So let's manage NuGet packages and install refit. There we go. Let's also install the HTTP client factory so that we can easily register refit and dependency injection. There we go. And if you're not familiar with refit, here we go. It's an automatic type safe rest library for .NET. And what that allows us to do is create an interface that has a method. And we're essentially gonna tell refit that whenever we call this method, we wanna make a git request to a particular endpoint. So this is just the base route of our API, which we indeed do wanna hit. So let's import that from refit. And we also wanna tell refit the type of the value that we expect to get back from that API. So that's gonna be a secret message response, which our API does send back. And in fact, we have this API response type living in this shared project, so secretmessage.core. So we can actually import that into our Maui project. So let's add a reference to secretmessage.core and import this response type. Okay, so now let's take this interface type and get that into, I guess, just our sign in view model here for testing. So get the I get secret message query and we'll get that through the constructor. And let's actually run this in the constructor, which might not be a good idea, but let's just execute this query and then we'll call continue with. So after this async method completes, we will handle the result in this callback. And what we're gonna do is set another property. This one will be the secret message. So let's set that based on our API response. So it'll be in the response result and then our secret message. And I feel like this stuff could be null if the request fails. So let's add a fallback here just in case. All right, so now let's move over to finally registering this in dependency injection, this get secret message query. And then we'll show how we can automatically pass the access token of the login user whenever we execute this request. So in our Maui program.cs, we're gonna take our builder services and we wanna add a refit client for the get secret message query. We also need to configure this client and specifically set the base address. Let's reference the WPF project here. Okay, so it's localhost 7297. Let's use that. And the last thing we're gonna add is something called an HTTP message handler. So we can specify some sort of handler type here, which specifies custom code that we can run before and after refit executes the HTTP request. So specifically, we wanna use this HTTP message handler to append the access token of the currently logged in user to the request. So we're gonna call this something like a Firebase auth HTTP message handler. And let's generate that. There we go, just throwing it down here. And this needs to inherit from delegating handler, which really helps simplify the handler implementation because it takes care of basically everything. All we have to do is override send async. So we need to get the access token of the currently signed in user, which is gonna be in, you guessed it, the Firebase auth client. So let's get that through the constructor. And now let's get the access token by taking the auth client, grabbing the currently signed in user, and calling get id token async and the nice thing about this method is it'll automatically handle token refreshes so if the tokens expired it'll refresh that for us within this method and give us back a fresh token so let's make this method async so that we can await this and make this async and if we have an access token then what we're going to do is take our http request and modify that so we're going to set a header specifically the authorization header to an authentication header value. Our auth scheme is bearer. And then we just need to pass in our access token. Now, one more thing here, we should handle cases where we're not signed in and the user will be null. So let's actually extract this to a method just to simplify the code we write here. So we'll call this get access token. And then we just have a little check here. So if the auth client user is null, then we'll just return null which means we won't have an access token and then we won't try to append anything onto the request. All right, so almost ready. We will summarize everything that we've done as we reach the end here. One thing we have to do is add this Firebase auth HTTP message handler in dependency injection. And I think that's it. Let's run this. Let's see what happens here. Oh, and I forgot, we're not running our API. Let's fix that. So in our project, let's configure the startup projects. We wanna start multiple. So we wanna start 
secretmessage.maui as well as our API. All right, let's give this a try now. All right, so we're already signed in because we're persisting auth. So we should have an access token here. There we go. Now we append that on the request. Looks good. Let's continue. Okay, sorry, my camera just crashed. So got to turn that off here. But our get secret message query succeeded because we were authenticated. So we see we got our message back. Hooray. Let's continue. Oh, but our UI didn't update because we're setting the field here. We should be setting the property so that we call property changed. And also we didn't add anything on the front end to show our secret message. So let's try this one more time. We should see it now. There we go. Sweet. Okay, camera's working again. I think we're good. All right, so in summary, we already had a Firebase project, but if you don't already have one, go ahead and create one. It's free, by the way. That's the great thing about Firebase Auth. I should have mentioned that earlier. But after creating your project, go ahead and install firebaseauthentication.net v4. And then using that, you can create a Firebase Auth client and you can pass in your API key, which is not a sensitive value. Okay to expose here, pass in your auth domain, your specific providers, and optionally a user repository so that you can persist the signed in user. Very easy and very powerful. Then go ahead and create a page where you can sign in and you can use the Firebase auth client to sign in with an email and password async. And then also add a page for signing up where you can use create user with email and password async from the auth client to create a new user and sign up. And then as we've mentioned, the auth client manages state for the currently signed in user. So if you want to show any profile details, dig into the auth client, grab the user, get the info and do whatever you want. And lastly, if you need an access token in order to authenticate with a backend, simply grab the current user from the auth client and call get ID token async, which handles token refresh automatically. And boom, you got your access token and you can authenticate with your backend. So this was a lot, apologies if we went kind of fast here. As always, source code is gonna be in the description if you need to reference anything. I'll also leave the Firebase Authentication v4 docs in the description if you need to reference those. And even though this was a lot, I feel like we only touched the surface. So like the Firebase Authentication package can do other things like password resets, for example, a lot of the different OAuth flows, which we didn't touch at all, although I might do a follow-up video for that. But aside from that, Hopefully this was enough to get started with implementing Firebase authentication in your own .NET MAUI application.